relations between Ethiopia and Australia have been strengthening from time to time, especially after 1991, the relation and cooperation between the two countries are gaining its momentum. Australia has been providing significant humanitarian assistance to Ethiopia for the past two decades. As a long-standing supporter of World Food Programme, Australia has contributed a significant amount of money to its operations in Ethiopia. Maternal and child health is a key part of Australia's support to Ethiopia, which is even expected to be intensified in the future. Since 1984, Australia has supported the Hamelin Fistula Hospital in Addis Ababa and has extended its services to rural parts of Ethiopia. This hospital will carry on when I go, because I'm 87 yesterday, and um, I had a wonderful birthday party with all the staff, which was lovely. And so we here I say to <laughs> Ethiopian television, happy birthday, Dr. Hamlin. Yes, She's only 87, and she performed surgery yesterday too, I think. No, last week. Last week. But I don't do very much. If I die tomorrow, the hospital will carry on. So this is what's leaving me with great peace in my mind, and especially to have the midwifery college functioning and sending out midwives to the women in the countryside who are neglected. The women in the countryside are second-class citizens. They're not looked after adequately, and they've been suffering over centuries. And now we're making a difference. And our midwives have got tremendous um, uh, influence in the villages. They've made friends with the local people. They come from the countryside themselves. We took them from the high schools from the countryside, trained them for three years, and graduated with a bachelor's degree in midwifery. And now they've gone back to their own countryside. Recently, Australian Foreign Minister Kevin Road has paid official working visit to Ethiopia to participate in the high-level African Union and the World Economic Forum meetings. In his brief stay in Ethiopia, Mr. Kevin Root visited Hamelin Fistula Hospital in Addis Ababa and met Dr. Catherine Hamelin, the co-founder of Hamelin Midwifery College. <music> Dr. Catherine Hamelin is a philanthropist Australian woman working in the area of fistula and training of midwifery in Ethiopia since 1959. While visiting the hospital, Foreign Minister Kevin Rood appreciated the dedicated accomplishment of Dr. Catherine Hamelin in the area of health care in Ethiopia. The story of uh, Dr. Hamlin's work here is well known in Australia. Uh, more and more people appreciate the work she's done now over 50 years or more. That's a long contribution. But the practical thing is that there are literally, I think, about 30,000 operations which have been performed through here over many, many years. And that's 30,000 lives which have been changed. Um, that is good. And it's good to celebrate the work of good people. We're very excited that he's visiting our hospital because it will make an enormous difference to our fundraising, I'm sure, to say that the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs has come especially to see our patients. Former Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd has also held talks with Prime Minister Malazenawi on regional and bilateral issues. In discussion with uh, Prime Minister Mellis, I have um, known him for many years uh, as uh, Prime Minister of Australia. I have uh, spent a lot of time with him and now as Foreign Minister it's good to meet him here in Addis Ababa. Uh, we have done a lot of work together in the past through the G20. We've done a lot of work together in the past on climate change. Uh, but this is my first bilateral visit to Ethiopia and also to inform uh, the Prime Minister that we have a new Australian Embassy here in Addis and uh, to introduce him to our Ambassador and to our other officials. Mr Kevin Rood has appreciated Prime Minister Malazenawi's role in G20 and the role of Ethiopia in representing Africa in climate change conferences which become new development agenda. Prime Minister Mellis has played a very strong role in the G20. Uh, every G20 summit I attended, he was there representing also the voice and the interests of Africa. And he has a high standing with the leaders of the world. I know that from my own experience. Secondly, um, the G20 has now agreed on a new development agenda, a global development agenda, agreed to its soul. Our challenge now as Australia and as Ethiopia uh, and as the G20 is to make sure that that development agenda is implemented 
and that is important for Africa. Recently, Australia has opened its new embassy in Addis Ababa to enjoy greater opportunity, growing hope and a range of common interests with African countries and institutions of the continent. Mr. Kevin Root said that the opening of the new embassy in Ethiopia will advance diplomatic ties and cooperation between the two countries. Well, it's critical to have an embassy here because um, our ambassador, uh, Lisa Felipetto, is um, an experienced Australian diplomat, previously uh, posted in um, Nairobi, um, but also provides us with a day-to-day -day link with the minister, with the prime minister's office, also with the African Union and the UN. I've just been with the UN uh, Economic um, uh, Cooperation uh, uh, organization uh, for Africa with the Under Secretary General. We intend to do much more in Africa because we see ourselves as long-term partners uh, through long-term engagement with the new Africa. According to Mr. Kevin Rood, his government will provide its support for the success of the Ethiopian Five Years Growth and Transformation Plan. Certainly the support that we will provide Ethiopia, and we currently for some time now have been providing bilateral development assistance cooperation to Ethiopia, but the subject of my discussion in part with the um, Prime Minister this morning went over uh, the detail of that plan, the Growth and Transformation Plan. I mentioned it here, which is why dealing with maternal and child health and the role of women in Ethiopia is part of that plan. It's part of this Minister's plan for the health sector. Therefore, it's part of our plan for the future working with Ethiopia as well. The key to it is this. If you come here as an international partner, it's to work with and through our friends here uh, in Addis and not trying to do something outside of that because um, this is the government of Ethiopia. You've worked out your own priorities. How do we work within those? But you'll see us doing that in reality over time. During his stay in Ethiopia, Foreign Minister Kevin Rood has also visited St. Paul Hospital which is located in Addis Ababa and the meet Minister of Health, Dr. Tedros Adhanom. This visit to the hospital is designed to give good impression about the whole range of activities that the Ethiopian government has been doing to improve the health sector. Recognizing the ever-growing health challenges, the government has been firmly committed to an integrated health system, strengthening approach to service delivery with a focus on primary health care. Uh, we can see from the results on the ground today that the focus on this integrated health system strengthening approach to service delivery and our drive towards achieving universal access to primary health care are clearly paying off. With a combination of interventions, as you rightly said, Your Excellency, under five and maternal, mort maternal mortality have declined significantly. Also HIV and malaria related deaths and cases are on the decline due to effective community-based primary health care interventions. As a result, we are beginning to see the positive economic effects of a healthier population, particularly among rural communities where valuable time and effort previously lost to these diseases and poor access to services is now being invested in productive activities. No matter how there is much to be done, the constant and flexible support from partner country has played paramount importance for the expansion of health care in Ethiopia. Mr. Kevin Rood congratulated the Ethiopian government for the remarkable achievement registered in the area of health care. Minister, I'd like to begin uh, by uh, also congratulating you and the government of Ethiopia for the great success you've had. Uh, I read a lot of statistics. Um, and some dis statistics are very disappointing, others are very encouraging. These are very encouraging. When I look, for example, that you are reducing maternal mortality rate from 673 to 550, 100,000 live births, that's a lot of progress. Now, reducing the under five mortality rate from 123 to 100 per 100,000 live births, that's a lot of progress also increasing the prevalence of contraception from 13.9% to 30%. That's a lot of progress. Finally, the Australian Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Kevin Rood, visited the Ethiopian Mine Action Office to witness the important work being done to improve livelihood in land mine affected regions of Ethiopia. Australia has committed to provide one million Australian dollars in 2011 through the United Nations Development Program in support of the mining and mine risk education activities. This support is expected to make a significant contribution to Ethiopia's economic development targets and 
the achievement of Millennium Development Goals. The support will help the Ethiopian Mine Action Office to clear approximately 830,000 meters square of land for farming, housing and other infrastructure. The Australian Foreign Minister Kevin Rudd said the support will help to provide minor risk education for more than 8,000 people. In partnership with the United Nations Development Program, the Ethiopian Mine Action Office aims to clear a total of 10 million meter square landmine infested areas and provide minor risk education to 100,000 people by the end of 2011. Director General of Ethiopian Mine Action Office, Isai Gabriselasi, appreciated the financial and technical support from partner countries like Australia for the success of the program. The Australian donation is uh, very key in this completion of um, landmine problems in Ethiopia and I hope based on what they say they will contribute in the future it will also help us in establishing our training center.